Hello, just wanted to share with you real quick how I um, have been doing my, my concrete floors to look like stone. So you can see, let me turn it around, it'll be easy for me. Um, we started out just by pouring really, really rough concrete. I mean, we did our best to, to get it, you know, more or less flat, but where it was a one, well, one and a half man job, <laughs> um, there was no way and no intention to get it perfectly flat or, or perfectly level because the intention was always to do this. Now, I, last summer I, I did this and uh, the reason I chose to do this kind of free form style, well, I'll take it back. The reason I chose to do pieces, whether free form or square, um, versus just a big slab is because this way I can still do it myself and do it in little tiny pieces. Um, whereas if I did a, a big flat slab, I'd, it would just be so much work and I'd have to hire 10 people. And I guess that's one, one reason. The other reason is because I wanted to, uh, well, I just wanted a stone floor. I've always liked the old, old, old homes. Uh, that have stone floors, not many uh, nowadays. We actually priced out a flagstone uh, that looks really similar to this, and it was prohibitively expensive, and it was also going to be extremely difficult to, to get it to be even. They all come in varying thicknesses, and um, uh, some of them have ripples and little uh, holes or or you know ridges and shelves on them. And I just thought, um, you know, all things being being equal, um, we could probably get it to look pretty much like stone uh, this way, and uh, and it'd be cheaper and uh, easier to get it flat, easier to have a, a nice, perfectly smooth, sweepable surface. This is getting to the point where I need to need to do this. It's, it's still soft enough to carve, but um, way too hard to to um, to trowel anymore. I've troweled it probably three or four times, getting it as smooth as I possibly can. Um, it's not perfect, but but it is but it is extremely smooth. And actually those imperfections act, um, help to um, create a little bit of a modeled um, pattern, you know, random randomness to it that, that looks like real stone. So what I did is I started out with this um, sand mix, which is just like concrete mix, except without the stones. It's just Portland cement and sand and kind of a high, a high concentration of, of Portland, actually. So it's uh, pretty, pretty hard and pretty, pretty tough thing, pretty tough mixture. And I've added to, to each bag that I mix, you know, in a, in a wheelbarrow because uh, the cement mixer doesn't do a good job of it. So to each bag of this, I add, well, I just, I just came up with this. I, you know, there's not any recipe that I found. I don't even know what it is, a half cup or third cup. Um, but I just do a couple scoops, do two scoops of that per bag. And I could do one if I wanted to, or I could do four. And if I did four, it would be more red. And if I did one, it would be a little bit more brown you know, when it's finished instead of this kind of in-between brown and uh, red color. And uh, so I just uh, decided to just stick with that for the, for the coloring. Um, okay, so the, the hard part is getting it down and perfectly level. Um, it's just a lot of really hard labor. It takes some muscle and you have to kind of work uh, not terribly quickly, but you, I'm surprised. I was surprised how how quickly it got away from me, or or almost did. Um, you know, this you know from from there to to there was only two bags. So there, it's probably one bag. There's another bag, and from there you can kind of see this transition because this is more wet still. From there to here is just is one bag. And I've gone you know roughly an inch thick. And in places it's three inches thick, and in places it's like uh, 
maybe only three eighths inch thick, like right there, the transition. And I accidentally got kind of a high spot in the, uh, in the floor there. Uh, I promise I'll get to it, um, to what I'm doing here. But uh, I, what I did is I, I measured up uh, just a quarter inch or so from the highest spot. I found the highest spot in the house, which happens to be right there. Well, actually that matches one other spot. It happened to be the same height. And then I went around the whole house and uh, with a level and with strings and made sure that I uh, had that high spot. And in places, way over there in the corner by the, you know, past the kitchen into the other room um, is the low spot. And I'll have to go probably four, maybe even five inches thick in that spot. But um, as, as I also did over here in places, maybe three or four inches over there. Anyway, long story short, I, I'm getting it level one piece at a time. And now I am carving out the, the stone. So I'm using, using a, just a butter knife. And what I'm doing is, let me sweep this away so you can see it better. So I'm simply trying to create a sharp but slightly beveled edge against the stone. And then I'm simply roughing up the part that will represent the mortar. Of course, this is all faux, you know, this isn't really mortar and this isn't really stone, obviously. But the intention is to make it look that way. Mortar is uh, not always, but in some applications, pretty rough, as it is in this one. <laughs> this is a, a true, true stone wall, um, but it was done with a slip form method. And I've gone back in with a gloved hand and uh, just kind of hand done the, the mortar after um, chipping away the stuff that's left over from the slip form uh, method. So um, uh, it, it's obviously a little bit rough um, because it was with a, a gloved hand rather than a tool. I, I, I wanted the stone itself, which is actually pretty rough on its own, to um, to actually stand out as the smooth part of this of this arrangement. So now that in, by contrast, the stone actually looks quite quite finished or smooth compared to the really rough um, uh, grout or mortar. So I could have used grout, but I actually used mortar as the grout. Anyway, so I'm kind of matching that same theme here. So again, a bevel. And I'm just carving it that way. And the reason I do the bevel is because if I carve down, the cement would actually split sort of on both sides of the path that I make of the scratch. So I'm beveling it this way, and it sort of chips it up this way, like that. And of course, depending on the hardness, it <laughs> got some people in the family. Um, so depending on the hardness of this man, it will actually kind of chip up. But uh, this right now is is at a, at a stage where I kind of have to scratch it away. So the idea behind this, uh, the the shape and the pattern is okay. First of all, I'm I'm following a few rules for myself. I'm never making a four a four square area. In fact, I haven't I haven't yet. Um, I'm going to try to stick to that unless it particularly needs it. Hey, babe. I love you, too. <laughs> um, and then another thing that I want to do on these to make it look realistic is... Um, so stones are never going to be, you know, naturally perfectly evenly spaced. So I'm going to try to make parts where they're almost touching. I mean, you know, in reality, if I was laying this in real stone, laying real stone on here, I wouldn't let them touch except on some minor, minor occasions and maybe just in one or two places. But in some places, I'll make it closer and in other places where it would be less likely to find a stone that, that would fit that, I'm intentionally making a bigger gap. And this is actually quite large. So I'm gonna add 
like a little filler, which isn't perfect, but I wish I would have done something like that instead. But it's all right. It, it kind of adds adds variety to it. So I'm gonna let's see. It's actually not easy at all to to decide where to go. I kind of have to get up here and trace it out. I'm thinking right there. Right there, it seems natural to make it go to a corner. Don't think. Maybe to avoid them all being the same size, I'll make this one something like that. And this one curve around, make a space there. And then I'll make this one be biggest. Got a really huge one here, so I think having a variety of Yeah, something like that. So, it's kind of scary. And then, so I got one side there, and then, so I beveled it that way, and then this side. And this isn't, it's not necessary to be perfect. Um, but you see how I, I didn't follow that line. I followed a natural contour, um, or made up a natural contour, um, to this stone, kind of in, in a way ignoring the, the grout line. Just chip it away. Um, speaking of this pattern, I think that looks pretty good actually. And uh, after it uh, cures, and you know, three or four days at least, I'll, I'll wait till all the water is out of it. And it's you know, basically 95% cured after three days or more. Um, uh, I will go over it with several coats of linseed oil, just boiled linseed oil. Um, you can see that this has three coats, these have two coats, this has no coats. <laughs> this particular one. Um, I think all the rest have two. Um, so the oil, oh, that does have one. Um, so like obviously it darkens as, as it uh, gets more and more coats of oil. I think I like this best, but that's gonna hold up best to, um, you know, against stains and such, because you can see it is, we've got some dirt tracking into that um, and various, you know, uh, kids are blowing bubbles and some of the bubble stuff dropped there, so it's discolored it. Anyway, these things are not, particularly a problem because, again, stone is, is imperfect and that's kind of what makes it beautiful. But uh, that's, uh, that's how I do it. Just wanted to mention also, um, those of you who are building a house in the future or have plans to build a house, and if you plan to or even think you'll ever incorporate stone, I want to entrust you with this <laughs> super, super important um, thought and detail that whether you're putting up real stone or fake stone, you've got to think about how, um, how gravity would play a part. And I'm not saying I did a perfect job, but the idea is that if this were dry stacked without mortar, that it would still, you know, you want it to still feel like it would hold together. Um, so in, in essence, kind of a brick pattern where, um, you don't want too much of, you don't want a, a huge line like going all the way down. Um, so you stagger them as much as possible and make it so that, uh, again, if the mortar wasn't holding them together, um, gravity would have a tendency to lock them in place instead of make them um, fall apart. So they kind of um, angle down towards each other um, instead of the other way. So again, this may not, may or may not be a good example, 
but um, it, it looks pretty pretty natural and it is in fact a real stone wall so uh, it hasn't fallen down and that's <laughs> and that's that's the a testament to his strength I guess anyway hope this has been enjoyable to you uh, to see how I do that and uh, I hope everyone who watches this uh, takes it upon themselves to, to try it if, if you're interested it's not scary to do and it, it can yield some pretty cool results so uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later bye I better get back to work.